Hey, it's Friday, July 22nd. This is my cheat sheet for today. The head feels just fine. No worries. I promise it looks worse than it actually is. Okay, so the rising gas prices, this situation just won't go away. The news here is not good. We're paying 16 cents a gallon more than we were just two weeks ago. Bigger problem we've got is this is a time of year where seasonally prices generally are lower. In fact, we were paying more than $1 per gallon less this time last year than we are right now. And the problem is the only time we see summer spikes in gas prices are event-driven situations like hurricanes when it disrupts a, a production because there are oil wells affected or something. So here's the problem. What happens if we get one of those events? This is the worst thing that can happen in an already slow economy because nothing takes juice out of the economy quicker than rising gas prices, which work like a tax increase on all Americans. Even worse, Bank of America's chief oil analyst yesterday said he's convinced that by sometime next year, we'll see $5 per gallon at the pump. Sorry to start you out that way. Android. Uh, the app situation with their security leaks isn't completely fixed. You might recall about a month or, or so ago, Android uh, was getting in, uh, getting in the news because of many of their apps that were hitting the marketplace having various security leaks. People stealing personal information, putting malicious software in apps that would, would allow them to take over the device uh, that uh, accessed it. Well, the news is still not good there. 8% of all Android apps that were tested are still leaking personal information. The bottom line here is, if you're an Android user, do not download an app from an unrecognizable manufacturer or app developer. You stay with the ones you know and that are tested, and uh, you, you don't go with something that just looks cool because the problem is it could be leaking your personal information. Apple, meanwhile, set yet another record uh, earlier in this week. When the Lion OS operating system came out, it became the first operating system to hit the 1 million download mark in a day. More than 1 million downloadable copies were sold day one for the Macs. And uh, the word is pretty good so far. Some people are worried that until you had several updates and patches, uh, perhaps you didn't want this operating system. But for now, th those that are using it seem to be pretty happy with it. Google Plus is looking to take on Facebook head on. You know, Facebook figured out with Farmville, Cityville, and some of their other games that the quickest way to develop longer time spent with Facebook was actually to get people playing social media games together. Google Plus has 10 million users to their new social network, which is not a bad start, uh, but they need a lot more, and they need people to spend more time with it. So they're now targeting the game manufacturers. In fact, they're trying to steal them away from Facebook and maybe console companies as well. Google is offering the best deal that game manufacturers have ever had. They are offering more than 70% of all sales to the game manufacturer. So the companies that would make the games would get to keep more of the money than if they developed for anything else out there in the gaming world. We'll see if that works. It's not a bad idea. Chrysler is done with TARP. They did pay back the remaining payments owed to the federal government, which is good news. However... Uh, the news wasn't perfect. We did still lose money overall on Chrysler, at least $1.3 billion. The Chevy Cruze, it's going to come to the United States in diesel form. There are many diesel advocates out there these days, and this will give you one more option. Uh, the Chevy Cruze for 2012 will come with a diesel option in the United States. And the new day trading fantasy here in the United States, currency. 8% of the currency market, or about $320 billion worth of trades a day, are happening from day traders. Just you and me sitting behind a computer trading currencies reminds me a lot of the late 90s. And the news there, well, it wasn't good because 90% of all day traders lose money. If you're part of the 10%, you can win big, make big money, and more power to you. But it's probably not a good idea for most people to be doing this. That's the cheat sheet for today. Enjoy your weekend. We'll see you come Monday.